Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Mars Horizon. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a preview build. That being said, it's about three days before the game actually releases to the general public. So what you're looking at here should be, for the most part, reflective of the finished product. So what is Mars Horizon? Well, it's kind of sort of like Kerbal Space Program, except it's much more casual. Don't get me wrong. I love Kerbal Space Program. Uh, some of the joys that I got out of that game was just creating different kind of spacecraft from the ground up and then watching it explode on my platform because I didn't time the different parts right or because I didn't build it in such a way that it was balanced and so on. This game takes out all of the required research for you in the sense that you don't have to sit there and try and learn what a gimbal is, um, what the uh, center of gravity is, or anything like that. This game dumbs it down to where, you know, it pre-builds everything for you so that you don't have to worry about designing something uh, that will work. This game is turn-based in the sense that you're going to be starting off, I believe it's like the 1950s or something like that, 1940s, 1950s, and you're going to be running your very own space program. You get to choose, I think it's one of five or six different starting nations, like you've got NASA, the ESA, China, Japan, like you can choose a faction to start as, and you get different bonuses for starting as them. Although you can customize your experience even further by removing those traits from that faction and picking your own. So you can have the United States remove all of their traits and pick new ones, which is really cool. I love that. It's a great way of, you know, customizing your experience. There's also multiple difficulty levels. The standard ones are easy, normal, hard, but there is a advanced button that you can click and you can actually put it on very easy or very hard if you want to. So you can even make that there are there are more difficulty settings outside of the three that you see on the basic screen. Just make sure you hit that advanced button to see the rest of them. And there's different sliders that you can adjust. All of that, you know, that that's great. I love that. I, I love the ability to customize my startup any way I want to. I can put it on very easy to learn the game. Then if I feel like it, I can up the difficulty later when I'm actually good at it. I love that. I love it when games do that. So kudos to the developer for including that many customization options. Again, this game is turn-based in the sense that you start off with very little technology. There's a tech tree. Uh, and you've got three different tech trees. There's like building, missions, and I think it's like spaceships or something. And you're going to be, or vehicles, you're going to be researching things, uh, spending research points to research various things. If you research a building, there is a home base area, headquarters area, where you can plop down buildings and there's adjacency bonuses and penalties. So you kind of have to design your headquarters um, and also manage your costs because building over trees will increase the cost of putting the building down and so on. So you've got research trees that you've got to research new things in. You've got um, different vehicles that you're going to be researching, and those are primarily to complete missions. Um, again, the game is turn-based, and typically the way a turn plays out is, do you have a mission queued up? No? Okay, so let's pick one. You can pick to uh, you can you can pick to embark on a mission that is available to you technologically. At the very beginning of the game, it's just going to be test flight. That's all you can do is test flight. But through the research tree, you'll unlock more mission types like uh, lunar orbits or humans into space or animals into space and so on. And as you research these missions, you're going to be picking them and queuing them up in your little missions area. And you can only do so many. At the beginning of the game, you can only have one active mission at a time. Um, over the course of the game, as you construct more buildings, you can have more missions available going on at once. So when you pick a mission, you get to pick a vehicle. There's a vehicle designer. Again, you don't have to worry about specific design, but you're going to choose between different parts that you've unlocked. Um, at the very beginning of the game, you're not going to have a whole lot of things to choose between. But um, over the course of the game, you'll unlock different 
parts that will grant you greater mass or better fuel efficiency or uh, increased durability, uh, payload, that kind of thing. So the vehicles are going to have different parts. And then once you get into it in the game, there's also payload and um, other parts of the vehicle that you have to build as well. And the whole idea is you're going to be building these vehicles, putting them together, and then you're going to launch them and try and complete your mission. There is a bit of RNG in this game in the sense that you, whenever you launch, there's like a 0 to 100% meter on the bottom. And it's a random roll of the dice. Um, you have to, like, there will be different sections of this meter like it'll be between zero and five percent is red that's a critical failure five percent to twenty five percent is there is a problem uh twenty five percent to ninety five percent is neutral nothing bad nothing good or nothing bad happens then ninety five to hundred that is something great happens that's rng you can't avoid it the only thing you can do is mitigate the risk by making better parts um, over the course of the game, there's a training uh, area. Whenever you're whenever you're preparing your mission, there's a training section, and you can either like get more science after the after the mission is done, or just increase your your durability. Uh, you know, which affects your RNG chance and different things like that. So you can mitigate it to some degree, but there's no way to get rid of it. Uh, so there's that there's that random dice roll when you're launching a, a vehicle. Um, when you're in space, uh, sometimes you'll have to do missions and that those missions are again, RNG based. You, you might have to, okay, I need four red of these icons and four blue of these icons and I have to spend energy and, uh, a person or I need, I can trade this resource for this resource and you're queuing up these actions for your turns and you have like, say four turns to get the required resources that you need. Every time you try and get a resource, every time you queue up an action, every action has an RNG, that same meter, 0 to 5% or 0 to 10%, it's critical failure, something bad happens. So you're rolling the dice every single time that these actions are occurring, um, and assuming that you complete it, then you'll be able to move on to the next mission, uh, or to the next part or the next phase of that mission, if there is one. So, yeah, so you're going to be, again on the ground, creating vehicles, launching them into space, completing missions, coming back. You're doing this so that you can earn reputation. Uh, reputation will affect how much income you get over the course of the game. The higher your reputation, the better your income tier, which is good. You've also got diplomacy in this game. Uh, certain RNG decisions that you'll come across, like certain events will pop up. You have a choice, and they will affect diplomacy in different ways. Uh, your 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 relations with other factions, and um, you know different choices will affect that. Um, so yeah, you're going to be earning reputation. Uh, there's also research per turn. You're going to be earning that, and again, um, by completing more missions and being the first into space or being the first to do this type of mission, will earn you bonus bonus credits and bonus research and you know bonus income so that you can grow your company. I know it's a lot to take in. It's difficult to explain the game in all of eight minutes, 10 minutes, but uh, that's the general gist of it. It's build vehicles, launch them into space, complete missions, um, increase your income, your research per, per turn, and your reputation with other factions if you can do it. And in the meantime, you're going to be spending your money, researching new technologies, you're going to be spending your money building, uh, constructing buildings on your headquarters so that you can get passive benefits in different ways, um, like research per turn or uh, extra missions that you can embark on at the same time. Um, you can also spend money um, constructing the vehicles that you need to launch them into space in the first place, um, and so on. So there's, there's a lot to this game, but it did not overwhelm me uh, like Kerbal did. So, do I recommend this one? Absolutely, yes. Um, I like space. I like science. I like, uh, you know, I'm a big Star Trek fan. You know, Apollo 13 is one of my favorite movies. Um, and this game, even though I don't, like, completely understand all of the terminology sometimes, um, again, it's, it's more dumbed down than Kerbal Space Program. And that's, 
I use the word dumbed down like it's a negative, but it's not really a negative. It's a bonus for me because it's more casual and I can get into it easier. This is a game that I would be happy to recommend to kids. They would be playing a game and learning about science and learning about space, the different vehicles, um, you know, the difference between a rover and a shuttle and, uh, or, you know, satellites in orbit, different things like that. Um, and, and over the course of the game, you'll be sending vehicles to Mars or to other planets, the moon, and uh, completing missions that way. Um, in addition to being the first to complete something, there are side challenges that you can complete for even more reputation and money. Um, so the game will keep you busy for sure. Um, so yes, I absolutely recommend Mars Horizon. It's, it's a great space, uh, you know, space management game in the sense that you're managing your, your, your very own uh, headquarters and you're creating vehicles and doing all sorts of cool science stuff. I, I do recommend this one. It's, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, keep an eye out. It, it'll be available on November 17th. I don't have the price tag, unfortunately, but, um, you know, if, if it's like 50 bucks, I'd say, nah, nah, I don't think so. But, um, if it's like on the range of between 10, 20, 25 bucks, then yes, I would totally recommend it. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.